Okay, this is the project we're going to undertake. What we've got is a 2009 North Trail travel trailer with a fiberglass front cap, which, as you can see, has numerous wrinkles and deformations in it because it's undergoing what is known as delamination. The fiberglass has become unattached from the substrate underneath, resulting in these ugly wrinkles and looseness of the fiberglass. Looks like big giant varicose veins on the front of this trailer. So we're going to be removing the front fiberglass and replacing it with aluminum, which is commonly used in trailer construction nowadays. Uh, why did this happen? Moisture gets behind the fiberglass through various means and the substrate for the noses on these trailers is basically a glorified cardboard product which I will show you later uh, but it basically disintegrates due to the moisture and this is the end result. So, the first step in taking this trailer apart will be to remove all the moldings around the entire front nose cap. You've got these ones going all the way up the sides. Another one that you can't see it in this picture, but it goes across the top where the rubber roof joins the fiberglass. Down the other side. And this molding along the bottom will have to be removed as well. In addition to this light and the two marker lights on the top. Okay, this is what it looks like once you get all the fiberglass torn off. You can see all the aluminum framing of the trailer fiberglass insulation inside I've got this flap down here that actually covers the whole bottom of the trailer it just turns up underneath the siding to give some water protection from the bottom you can see uh, where it was leaking a little bit here some of this wood is a little separated. It's dried out now, but it was damp when I took it apart. Okay, this is the back of the uh, Phylon slash Unicor nose cap that was on my trailer after I took it off. Got it laying out in the driveway here. I was actually surprised. I thought I was going to see a lot of water infiltration and damage, particularly on the top where most of the wrinkles and delamination were occurring. Um, but not so much. This is actually the bottom and you should be able to see the water stain. Sorry for the shade, mottled shade. You can see some water staining there up about halfway on this side where water was leaking in. Uh, I expected to see this water damage on the bottom because it was always a problem area on the design of the trailer. 
the water definitely leaked in there. See, this is where a uh, utility light was on the front of the trailer. A little bit of water leakage there. Quite a bit over here. All the way up this side. See the water staining. This is where the marker lamps were. A little bit of water staining there. Same thing on the other side. Not quite this bad. Well, it's interesting is that in this middle section where most of the delamination was occurring there's very little sign of any water leakage whatsoever. And I thought I'd see a lot. So what actually was happening, if I can spin around here, was that the glue is giving way between the the backing material and the actual fiberglass as you can see here that it, it separates quite readily there's some sort of contact cement in there that uh, is coming loose and that is what was causing all the wrinkling on the front of this trailer getting a very ugly look not sure why the glue is coming loose. Could it be from some of the moisture issues or just the blazing Texas sun? But it was definitely coming loose. Okay, we just got back from the sheet metal shop with the three pieces of aluminum that are going to replace the nose cap on this trailer. So back up a little bit. There's one of them there. The other one is laying underneath. They're 4x8 sheets of 0.040 inch aluminum. And if we look closely on the bottom edge here, we've had the sheet metal fabricator bend an S seam into the bottom of each of those panels. Just give you a demonstration how that'll work. This piece will slide in and provide a watertight seam once we have it all assembled. Show you more on that later. Uh, over here on the trailer, we have the bottom piece, which is approximately two foot of aluminum diamond plate, 0.063 inches. Had to buy a 4x10 sheet of this and have it cut to size and then bent with a 90 degree break on the bottom which you can see here and that two inches there will bend underneath the lead edge of the bottom of the trailer again to keep water out. Of course, it's already waterproofed underneath there with the undercoating that the trailer manufacturer provided. So, we will start dry fitting these pieces, make sure they all fit, and then we'll show you how it goes together. Okay, we're starting to put this thing back together now. So I've got two sections in place, partially. Show you a little bit more about that. But the, here's the, uh, the flange where the S seam screws to the trailer framing to hold that tight. And then once the two pieces are together in their finished position, as you see this one here there's the S seam and all the screws are hidden underneath of course I had to cut holes for my marker lights both sides I'll have to get them attached and then cut the top to length I haven't yet screwed this down to 
make the final band, but I'll do that next. So it's coming together pretty nicely. The next step is to put a series of screws, like I said, along this flange and then we will put the diamond plate in from below. So I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, here's a little better sample of, uh, or depiction of what that S seam is like. This is just a handmade sample I made. So if I turn it sideways, see how that metal is bent in an S pattern. So the bottom part that sticks out below the S is where the screws will, uh, I'll use that flange to, with screws to attach it to the aluminum framing of the trailer to hold these panels in place. Okay, here's the finished product. Got all three panels put in. Tread plate on the bottom. Two panels 040 aluminum above that. You can see the seam there in between the two pieces of aluminum. That's been sealed with clear. RV caulking as has been this seam here between the tread plate and the aluminum. It took me all day to do all the caulking and sealing on this thing. It's real tedious. Got to caulk and seal all the way up both edges. Around the marker lights and of course across the top which you can't see right now. But it turned out great. It cost me about five to six hundred dollars to buy everything I needed to do this project. There's the old front laying on the floor, all wrinkled up. Good riddance. So anyway, all that's left to do now is put the graphics back on the front, which we already have propane tanks and the batteries back on and hit the road.